my name is Jim Urbanic. I'm the rock guy. Um, this is another installment on my Earth Sciences Geology rock counting videos. So we're going to talk about cataloging your collection today. Uh, it's, you know, really simple to keep uh, everything sorted out in your head when you have a, a few dozen uh, rocks, minerals, fossils, meteorites. It's another thing when you start to get over 100. Uh, I have uh, roughly 1,600 in my collection, and it, that's impossible to just keep it all in your head. So you're left then at that point to document what you have. Um, you can either do that in, on your computer. Uh, I do it in an Excel spreadsheet, or you know you don't have to be fancy about this, and you don't have to spend money or a whole lot of money on this. Uh, you can get a notebook and keep everything in a notebook. So. Uh, how to identify your specimens. Well, the easiest thing is to actually create labels. I, uh, if you've got great handwriting and you can write small, that's wonderful. If you're like me and you don't, uh, it's easier to just type up specimen numbers on a Word document and print them out from your computer. You're going to need some tools. Uh, obviously, either good handwriting in a sheet of paper or a computer and a printer. You're going to need uh, I recommend Elmer's Clear Glue. You're going to need a paintbrush, any old paintbrush. It doesn't have to have great bristles. It can have a stub of a bristle that actually works really well. Uh, and in fact, the more glue that gets built up in the paintbrush, the easier it is to put the labels on. And you're going to need a pair of scissors. The scissors are to cut out your individual label numbers so that you can put them on your specimens. So uh, I actually just put a specimen label on a really nice little uh, thumbnail fluorite on dolomite. And you can see I glued it on the back. So what I did was I took a little bit of that Elmer's clear glue and I put it on a discrete part of the back of the stone first. And then I used the paintbrush to pick up the label and put the label on that glue. And then I put a little bit more glue over the surface of the label actually picked this trick up from a curator of a museum and it works great. I haven't had a single label come off and I've uh, put about 12, 1300 of these on uh, stones already. So my recommendation is uh, let it sit and dry overnight uh, before you put it in a box. You don't want the glue and the label to stick to the box. I make my own boxes uh, in some instances, they're really easy. You can actually find um, schematics online uh, for free. You can just print them out on light cardstock, cut them to shape, uh, fold them up and glue them together. That's what I've done here. Uh, and then to put padding then in for your stone, uh, I asked family and friends for cotton from their, uh, their vitamin bottles, but also tissue paper. Oh, now I know where all my tissue paper is. Uh, put them in that. So like I said, don't put that in until the glue dries. But that's a great way to protect your individual specimens. And then uh, you want to keep a catalog of the specimens. As I said, you can do it in the spreadsheet. You can do it in a notebook. Uh, basically, the things that you want to capture on your spreadsheet are your specimen number. In my case, I use a personal identifier, so I'll do like JU, in this case, uh, JU1268, uh, where I keep the specimen. So I have several boxes that I keep specimens in, so I list the box number. If I have it in a display cabinet, I'll just note that it's in the display cabinet. Um, that way I know exactly where all my specimens are at any given time. Uh, I have a description of what the specimen is, or name of the specimen, rather. Uh, I have a description of the location that it was uh, dug. Uh, I have a physical description of the specimen. And then I will note the date, uh, excuse me, how I got it, whether it was a trade, I found it myself, uh, it was a gift, or I paid for it. Uh, I will note the date that I got the specimen and then where I got it from. So you can see this top one was a trade and I received it from the Maine Mineral and Geological Society. Great people, by the way. Uh, also, 
the boxes. So you can uh, you can use any kind of box. A shoe box is great. Uh, this is a repurposed uh, Christmas card box that I got from Costco once I emptied it of Christmas cards. Uh, so I put the box number on there, the one that I use on my catalog. Uh, I have a notes field, and usually I'll just do some sort of brief description, like uh, minerals from Arizona, or in this case I've noted thumbnail specimens. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, I'll have specimen numbers, so I can put, if I've got a series of specimens that run from uh, you know, say 100 to 125, I can put 100 to 125 here. Um, if they're from some specific person or group, I can make a note of that here. And then I have location or locations, and I can make a note of that as well. Uh, so I was talking about putting specimen labels directly onto specimens, but sometimes you get pretty small, small specimens, and uh, maybe you don't want to glue uh, a label directly on the specimen. So I have some specimens in what are called perky boxes, these small mineral boxes. And I actually put the label right on the base of the box. And being that I have the specimen uh, glued into the styrofoam insert in the perky box, they're not really going to get separated. Uh, also, I will have, for instance, so here's another, here's a barite specimen. And I make little cards that go with the specimens, like if I'm displaying them at a show or just in my mineral cabinet, and on the back I'll write the specimen number as well. You don't have to get real fancy with it. Um, it's really easy to make little boxes in a Word document uh, on your computer and then list the mineral information and print that out, cut it out, and put it with your mineral. Uh, also, for box labels, you don't have to do anything fancy. You can write directly on the box. Um, again, I'm not real crazy about my handwriting, but uh, I like to keep a little bit organized. And I print out labels um, from, you know, like you can get packages of Avery labels from your local drugstore or the supermarket or wherever, and you can print those out for yourself. So uh, this is kind of a primer again for cataloging your, question, or your collection, and I appreciate your time, and I hope you have fun collecting. Thank you so much. This is The Rock Guy, signing out.